This is Roberta here, coming to you from Roberta Abba Ministries. I hope all, you, all of you are doing well. It's a good, very early good morning here again. So good morning and good afternoon, good evening to everyone, depending on where you are watching us from. Again, this is Roberta. Um, coming to you from Abataba Ministries. So, uh, good to see you all and to have you join us today. I appreciate your time and uh, we're going to continue from here with our uh, studies on angels. Okay, so we're going to give a few minutes and see who else will be joining us. So, if you can see us, uh, write in uh, or comment in the uh, in the box and let us know that you are with us and then tell us your name and where you are watching from okay all right so we're gonna start a few minutes so to see anybody else is joining us thank you all righty i hope you had a good good day let's see here Let's start from here. Alrighty. Let's see. This is okay. It's up. Alrighty. Alrighty. Greetings, greetings. If you are joining us now, greetings to everyone, to all of you. Our, be our beautiful people out there, God's precious ones, we greet you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for joining us. I'll give two more minutes and then we can start from here. Uh, this is Roberta here, joining you, uh, or coming to you from Rotaba Ministries. To continue with our studies on God's angels okay and so to continue from where we left off all right and so uh, I think oh, yeah a few more minutes you know. then I start very soon here All right, all right, all right. Hello, everybody. Greetings, greetings, greetings to all of you out there. All right. We're going to start now. We're going to continue from where we left off on saturday morning and so um so that we can see if i can get to at least halfway and then we can see how, how many more sessions we have on the angels all right okay all right we're gonna start now. Again, greetings to everybody from wherever you are work, uh, watching from. This is Roberta coming to you from Roberta Abba Ministries. So good morning, and uh, let us know if you are joining us, and let us know where you are joining us from, and your name, okay, so that we can acknowledge you. Um, we're gonna today. We're gonna continue with our studies. Um, for God's angels, all right, and so um, on Saturday morning, we left off, we finished on fallen angels, and uh, and so we're going to continue from good and evil angels, okay. We said. The fallen angels are the ones that rebelled against God and they were thrown out of heaven. And Michael 
fought those rebellious angels and they overtook them and God um, removed them from heaven and then they are chained down waiting for judgment okay at the end of age so uh, that's where we left off and we gave example of the seraphim seraphim and what they do and i gave you a little bit of uh, uh how they look and my experience with with them and so now we're gonna uh today this morning we're gonna continue from good angel good or evil angels okay all right so um let's invite the holy spirit to come and join us to come and teach us okay so that uh we can be blessed and so let's pray and invite the holy spirit to come and join us thank you father thank you father thank you father father i honor you i exalt you and i worship you you are worthy of our praise you are worthy to receive our praise, Father. You alone are worthy, Father. We thank you. You've been so good this morning, Holy Spirit. I call upon you. I ask that you come. I ask that you come and take absolute control of what you want to teach us today. Come and teach your children. Take hold of might. Let every word that comes out of my mouth be edifying on. Teach us, O oh Lord. Reveal yourself to us through your word. Give us an understanding of who you are. And cause us to do your work. We thank you and we honor you. Let everything today be done. Be glorifying and pleasing and acceptable to your sight. I thank you and I honor you. Come in your own special way. Come in your fullness of your glory, of your fire, of your power. Touch the inner man of your truth. Touch them to see through your eyes. Bless them, O oh Lord, through your word. Do not let them come and go as they, they are. Change their lives through your word. I thank you and I honor you. In Jesus' mighty name, come and have your way. Amen. And amen. And amen. Praise you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Honor and glory. Honor and glory. Honor and glory, 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 honor and glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Honor and glory, honor and glory, honor and glory. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Father. All right. So we're gonna start by uh, getting to the scripture straight away. Okay, so we're gonna go to Matthew. We're gonna go to Matthew 24. And we're looking for 36. And I read, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. So now we see um, angel uh, mentioned here, 
and when I started uh, teaching on Saturday morning I stated that um, some of us have not been taught right even though we know angels but we don't really know what the assignment to God why they are created uh, they are summoned to the world and nations and to us and to the church as well and so um, we are in the end times and it becomes very important that we get to know the angels because they have a very large part to play in the end times okay so that is why we have to go to know uh, who the angels are and also uh, they are summoned to us what are the benefits what did they do do you understand so we need to get to know why god assigned them to us okay so we're gonna uh, uh, be looking at a series of um, scriptures talking about angels so this is the basic foundation so this is very just information information uh, on sa on saturday morning i gave some of, uh, i talk about a little bit about the cherubim and the seraphims how they carry god around okay and so we're going to continue breaking down um about different uh, uh subjects about angels so now we, we are we started from the good and evil angels because we left off uh where uh, we left off was the fallen angel it was important that i i, I mentioned that because um the fallen angels some people don't know what a foreign foreign fallen angel is and i said it's a devil and his uh, other angels that rebelled against god and so god has changed them chained them and they are waiting for judgment okay at the end time and so that's where we left off so just a little bit of background where we left off uh, on saturday morning and so we're gonna go through this information about angels and the scriptures that you know where we can find them in in the scriptures and uh different things that the bible says about them okay and then when we finish then we can actually go into uh different uh their ranks and things like that and also what they do for us and uh why it's important that we get to know uh what god says about them and what why they are they are around us and the benefit that we get okay and how to um how do i say this how to get them to fulfill their will the plan and purpose god has put them around you and this is this can only be done through the holy spirit okay so if you uh, if you you have the holy spirit it should not be hard for you to be able to speak to him and ask him so you know your common questions like how do I uh, command my angel? How do I go about it? You know, things like that. So, Holy Spirit is there. And so, we have got to know the angels and the, their importance in our lives. Okay? So, I just read um, Matthew 24, 36. And it mentions um, angels. It said, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven but my father only it's talking about when our lord returned and the timing that not even the angels knows about it's only the father god who knows the timing when the end will come okay so um once they were they are in, in involved in end times it's very important that i brought that scripture in okay so now we're gonna look for go and read and also i have to say this is what the bible says that just to let you know that the angels don't know all because they are not god okay they don't know all things they are limited in what they can do okay so we're going to go to first peter one and read from there All right, First Peter one, and we're looking for twelve. And I read, to them it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us, 
they were ministering to things which now we have been reported to reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven things which angels desire to look into did you, did you hear that it, it, the, the scripture said to them it was revealed that okay it said to them it was revealed that not to themselves but to us they were ministering the things to the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the holy spirit sent from heaven things which angels desire to look into so what the scriptures are is saying that the angels revealed to us they minister to us the things that have been revealed to them that the apostles you know they have been reported and they have preached so the revelation they get is not for them their assignment is to take what the holy spirit give them and then minister to us they bring uh, god's revelation they bring the revelation of, of the gospel of jesus christ okay and they desire to do that to look into onto those, those things and so because they are created to um to god's agenda one first and foremost to uh, worship god and carry god anything to do with god the angels were created for that and then it doesn't stop there they are involved in a whole lot of uh, many nations at you know uh, uh, activities and then in our lives too okay they are there to minister to us leaders protect us so they are also protectors okay all right so we're gonna go to um, what do you call it but having said that I have to say they are also stronger than us they are stronger than us but they are still not God okay they are still not God so um, but they are very intelligent <laughs> they're very very intelligent okay so um let's look to some let's go to some three sorry some 103 go to some 103 and read from there 103 two, 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 two. you can read what i just said 103 and i'm looking for 20. Alright, and I read, you make darkness and it is night, in which all the beasts of the forest creep about. I read again, you make darkness and it is night, in which all the beasts of the forest creep about. Um, what this scripture is saying that God makes in darkness is light okay God makes darkness and it is night and in the in that you see the beast that is referred to here that's the word I was looking for the beast here is talking about angels so angels are known not just the angels but they are they are different you find them different uh, references that are made to them to describe them and one of the word that the uh, the scriptures use for angels is the word beast that's the word i was looking for in the scripture here okay so everything we are doing is to uh, reference angels in scriptures all right and so because we're going to be talking we're going to be breaking down about uh the names as well so you see now really again he said you make darkness and it is night in which all the beasts of the forest creep about so the word beast here again is talking about angels okay all right we're moving on to second thessalonians 
and we are looking for one Second Thessalonians one and seven. Let's see. And I read, and to give you who, okay, let's see, and to give you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Yes, you see that we have another reference for angels over here they said they are mighty okay he said and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the lord jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels so when jesus was our lord jesus comes back he's not coming by himself he is he'll be accompanied with a host of angels and this over here the scripture said mighty his mighty angels so uh, they are not just angels, they are very strong. They are very powerful, okay? It's a mighty angels. And then we're going to go to um, Second Peter this time. Okay, we're going to go to Second Peter. We're going to be uh, reading from 11 to, to 11. Let's go. And I read, whereas angels, there we go, that's another reference right there, right from the beginning, who are greater in power. Did you hear that? I said they are very powerful. So, so what? Whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. Okay, so we see that. They are great in power and might. Okay? All right. And then we're going to go to the next scripture is... Uh, is it first? No, uh, Colossians. Colossians 1. Okay? We're going to go to Colossians 1. We are looking for uh, 16. Colossians 1 16. It's right here. All right. And I read For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones. I think we read this earlier. But I'm reading it again. Yeah, on Saturday, I think I read this. I'll start again. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and un invincible. Whether thrones, thrones is referred to, they are referring to angel. Okay? So those are the, some of the names that we'll be going into. Okay? So whether thrones, and the next one is principally uh, dominion. That's another word. Or principalities. That's another word they use to describe um, angels. Or powers. That's another name. All things were created through him and for him. Okay. So even these angels were created by Christ himself. All right, he's the Lord of all the angels. They all the angels report to him. <laughs> he created them for himself. So they carry the agenda of Christ. Like I said, they carry God's agenda. So this is very typical of what we just read here okay so now we see um, 
a scripture talking about the creation of angels that Christ himself was the one who created them because he says the, the, the scripture said for by him all things were created and so everything we see very whether visible or invincible that's what the scripture says. He said by for by him all things were created that are in heaven okay so everything in heaven Christ created and that uh, on earth and what is on on here on here on this earth it says visible and invincible whether thrones then it, it names the four angels in here it said whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers and it goes on to say all things were created through him and for him okay so angels are very very important angels are very very important if we look back in scriptures angels even right from the beginning angels were referenced and uh, even through the conception and the birth and uh, even the resurrection sorry the birth the death and his resurrection angels were involved angels uh, angel appeared to Mary and Joseph you know and so uh, announcing the uh, the, uh, the conception of Christ all right and so uh, we have to uh, educate ourselves about angels because they are very very important okay even I said on Saturday that before we are, we are born, God, give, you know, assigned angel to every child. So each and every one of us have an angel when we come on earth here, and they they are with us all the time. Okay, so we're gonna uh, let's see. Um, let's go to uh, Romans eight to look for how the angels are really organized okay they are very very organized highly organized better than some of us <laughs> and so let's go and see okay so we're going to go to romans 8 Alrighty. and we are looking for 38 and let's see 8.38 For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come you see that over here um it just gave us the names again it said for i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels now that that's one reference it says angel here and then it said no principality you see that word again it used to describe angels no powers that's another name to describe them not things present or things to come and things that we can we have it here we see it here all the ones that will come that is in the future all right okay so let's go to the next one which will be let's look for we're looking for another reference so like i said it's going to be a lot of referencing uh, angels and sometimes you know uh, what the scripture says about them sometimes it might be a name or just a reference sent to a situation okay this is all to uh for us to know that it's very important that we study god's word because if we got to know god's way 
or who God is, we have to study his angels. We've got to know who they are. Okay? So that's what we are doing here. All right? So let's go to, I think I'll go to Ephesians 3. Let's go to uh, Ephesians. No, no, we'll do one first. Let me go to Ephesians 1 first. All right. And then 1, I'll be reading from 21. 121. Let's see what it says. All right, and I read In whom the whole building, being filtered together, grew into a holy temple in the Lord. All right, I read again this one. Why did I put it here? I read it again. In whom the whole building, being filtered, together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, or in whom, the whole temple, sorry, the whole building being fitted. So, was the angel taking measurement or giving account of measurement in the temple of the Lord? All right, let me see what um, three is saying to be able to. Yeah, let me see what three is saying. Uh, three ten. All right, let's read. Yeah, I think I was on it. Yes, yeah, let's see what ten is saying. It says to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities. There we go. Principality is also another word for angels. Okay? And that's what say I'm gonna start again say to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places okay so powers i said earlier is another word for referencing uh, angels okay so angels we have to know they don't just um worship god or protect god okay they also have assignment, like I said before, with us and the world and end time and a whole lot. You know, anything, any aspect of our lives, they are involved. They are. Okay? Alright, so, um, I think I will move on. I will look for, I have read this already. Uh, I will look for Colossians two let's look for Colossians two and I'll be reading from fifteen let's see what it says it said having disarmed principalities did you see that it's another reference here right from the beginning that having disarmed principalities and powers he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. See, angels are referenced here. So, again, I read, he said, Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing, triumphing over them in it and then we go down to see uh, some of the uh, the differences between um, angels and ourselves I said on Saturday that angels are created 
a little higher than us and so um, we are not the same and for some of the things that we were given like some uh, some people even talk about the fact that do they want to know what the angels eat eat or not or they get married and I said angels don't have all the organs organisms that we have okay so they are not like us uh, they are totally not total but they are different from us okay so let's um, look for I think I'll go to Colossians 6 and see the different or the distinct from human beings okay and let's see um, so we're gonna look for Colossians first Col uh, sorry first Corinthians sorry we're gonna go to first Corinthians 6 come on And then I'll be looking for three. Come on. All right, this is second. Looking for first. All right. And I read from verse three. Do you not know that we shall judge angels? There we go. Angels, uh, like I said, they are not God. Uh, they are very limited to what they can do and they are accountable to God so um, just like we are they are not God everything they do God will judge it they judge, you know they are not uh, they are not God so everything they do uh, is limited they don't know it all okay so let's read again do you not know that we shall judge angels how much more things that pertain to this life so we see that even though they were created higher than us they still will be, they will be judged whatever they do okay if not they will go like the ones that fell rebelled against god they will be out of control and so they are limited what they can do okay god has uh, designed it that way just like us that we are we are giving uh, if i can say a blueprint that god has given us which is the word of god on how to uh, behave live our lives you know to the glory of god so and the, you know so every expectation everything that we need uh, to live our lives down here and you know until we leave uh, to go and join our Lord. This is our blueprint as guideline. Okay, this is what God is going to use uh, to judge us, just like the angels are being judged whatever, in whatever they do. Okay, all right, let's go to the next one. Yeah, I think it's a reference of the fact that they minister to us. I don't know, ministry angels. So we're going to go to. Hebrews, okay, we're gonna go to Hebrews. I'm looking for one. Hebrews one and then fourteen. All right, and I read, are they not all ministering spirits? Send forth to minister to those who will inherit salvation. There we go. It reads, it says, What the, are they not all ministering spirits? Meaning, they are spirit beings, okay, which God sent to us to many for them to minister to us. Meaning, those of us who will make it to heaven if we qualify, you know. Uh, we qualify to inherit, you know, even to, before salvation, or when this one particular scripture is saying, for those who will inherit salvation, okay, it, and also what I was trying to say earlier, also when a soul receive Christ, heavens rejoice, and heavens, meaning including all the angels, 
join God in celebrating the life that has been saved. Okay, and so we see that heaven is not boring at all. These angels have their hands full, <laughs> and uh, some of them they just worship God day and night, saying, "Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty," and uh, the whole world is filled with His glory, and. Uh, they, they are they are they are worshippers it's just amazing i quite oh okay i quite remember it was 2000 and 2008 i don't know you uh you guys who know where uh, cornell university is and i was driving from portland to ithaca that's where cornell university is and i was singing and worshiping and all of a sudden i got to Dryden, that's where TC3 is, just before uh, TC3, God opened my ears, and I, I could hear the angels joining in, in with me, and singing, because I was saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, and I could hear them, I'm like, oh, oh, I was shocked to hear that, and so they do, they are worshippers, they are worshippers. It was fantastic. I was I was surprised, but I was amazed, and then but I was delighted. I'm like, oh my God, this is awesome! And so when you get to know your angels, or you get into your angels, and I always say, anything that you spend your time to study, anything to do with God, or anything that you spend your time is, you get you get a reward. God will reward you. It's very very important. You will get to know the angels of God okay without knowing or studying or getting to know the uh, angels of God and then uh, it, it will be very difficult for us to teach, uh, teach God's word properly okay so uh, angels are very important to us and to our lives and everything that we do especially daily our daily activities they are they are everywhere with us okay and uh i said some some people debate whether angels can be in you know two places at the same time but they are not god again so they cannot okay and then also some people talk about what angels eat i don't know what angels eat but i think it's just i know there's you know bible talks about angel food but let me read it a uh, scripture then I, I can say something to you about an experience that i had when i was carried out uh, carried to some place in heaven with an angel uh, okay and what uh, what happened so um first we're gonna look for psalm 78 let's go to psalm 78 and see what that what the scripture is saying there Seventy-eight twenty-five, and I read: Men eat angels' angels' food. What is that? <laughs> he sent them food to the full. I have to ask the Holy Spirit about this. I didn't get any answer earlier, but I know you know um, there are people that will argue about anything so I intentionally brought this in just to make it you know uh, interesting and then for us to know how silly arguments people have about certain things but it is provoking it provokes you to go to the Holy Spirit and ask questions he said what men eat angel angels food he sent them food to the full. Let me read the second one uh, and see what I can get my answer here. Let me see if you know I'm down. Okay, let me go. Let me look what 24 says. It said, had rained down manna on earth to eat and give them of the bread of heaven. Men eat angels' food. 
So is bread of heaven is angels' food. Let's go to 26 and see. The one I just read is 24, okay? Let me read it again, 24. I'm sure if I go even earlier, I can find it, but let me do 23, uh, 24 down. And let's see what God is saying here. He said, Had rained down manna on them to eat, and giving them of the bread of heaven, men eat angels' food. He sent them food to the full. And then uh, that's 25. Okay, and I see 26. What is saying here? He caused an east wind uh -oh, to blow to blow in the heavens, and by his power he brought in the south wind. He also rained meat on them like the dust, feathers fowl like the sand of the sea. So is the bread of heaven i think so because it doesn't stay any, it doesn't state anything if you go always you have to go either um, earlier account if you're looking for an explanation or um you know after to see what the scriptures is saying but uh, if i find because we are not done yet if i get anything from the holy spirit i'll come back to you but i think it's it's a bread of heaven which God rained down, fresh bread, baked from heaven. <laughs> that rained down on the people of Israel. That's what uh, the Bible is talking about angels' food. All right. And then we're going to go to um, Genesis 18. Let's go to Genesis 18. I hope we are getting something out of this. Give me a thumbs up if you are there. Okay. I can't see anyone here. Let me see if I can scroll up to see anyone. I can't see anything. I can't see anybody. This. Can I get this in the fullness? All right. So we got. Genesis 18, and I'm looking for 8. Alright. And I read. So he took butter and milk, and the calf which he had prepared, and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree as they eat. That's Abraham, when he received the uh, angels. So angels drink milk. I read it again. Let me see if aha the the angels like cake too. <laughs> I saw I saw on if you look at uh, Genesis eighteen um, six. If we go back, like I said, you know, sometimes it's better to go up or after. Let's look. Let's look at six. What Sarah? Is it six? Yes. Let's look at six. What Sarah did? He said. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah, and said quickly because he had received the angels. Okay. He said, and okay. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said quickly make ready three measures of fine meal knead it and bake and make cake you see that and Abraham ran to the herd took a tender and good calf gave it to a young man and he hastened to prepare it so he took butter and milk and the calf which he had prepared and set it before them and he stood by stood by them under the tree as they eat there we go yeah so bread manna bread is so they eat a lot of they eat a lot a lot but they eat bread and cake i think the cake even might be just bread but you know 
in a, a small way but the the other side said bread and this one specifically said cake so we have to go with that all right see that so they came to minister to Abraham they came with a word see that they came bearing God's word to deliver to Abraham and so um, they are ministry angels ministering to us okay right so now we're gonna see okay I think I mentioned them here again the some of the angels that were mentioned are occasions that are examples of when angels opposes us when we pray okay let's go to Daniel uh, no first let's go to Romans oh we are here no I just left Romans 8 I'm looking for 38 again don't I just read this okay I'm gonna read it again anyways I'm looking for 38 so 838 oh I read maybe I read I read uh, yeah I did it's the same thing is the is the uh, the food reference that I was making yeah I think I double reference it but let's go to Daniel let me leave it and go to Daniel Daniel and see because I remember that there were where well, there was uh, there was there was delay in him, in receiving answer to his prayer. All right. So Daniel ten, we are looking for twelve and thirteen. All right. And I read Daniel ten, twelve, and thirteen. Then he said to me, "Do not fear, Daniel." For from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God. You see, your words were heard. Did you hear that? I'll read again. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And have come because of your words. And 13 reads, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief prince, came to help me, for I had come, for I had been left, for I have been left there alone, there with the kings of Persia all right so here we see Daniel had prayed and the answer has been delayed he has not heard anything okay and then 13 says that no no 12 he says that so he has come it was an angel uh, angel coming to Daniel to give him an uh, answer to his prayer so like i said the minister to us they come with revelation from god to you know give us answers and to minister to us in this case it was daniel's prayer to his you know to god about uh israel okay he wanted uh answers and then there we see that the angel of the lord uh had a position from the evil side so that's you know we have good like I said earlier we have good and evil angels so they arrested him if I can say it that way they stood in his way okay they block him from bringing answers it's the same thing sometimes we pray and we are not having the breakthrough we are not hearing what we are expecting to for God to say to us or the answers to our prayers this, these are some of the things that sometimes happen. Some of your, your prayers is being blocked. 
it doesn't mean that God cannot answer it or the answer will not come. Something is holding your answer from coming to you. And this is this are evil spirit. Just like we read here. Okay? The angel, an evil angel was standing in his way. Okay? So uh that angel let me see. By the prince of the king of Persia. Yeah, so is the angel who is in charge of the area of Persia that stood in his in his the angel's way that in this case i think it's angel gabriel angel gabriel was bringing the answers that daniel had prayed and waiting to hear from god but the answers were not coming because gabriel was withstood by oppo opposing angel which uh, oversee the area or the the country of Persia, which is Iran. In our days, Iran. Okay, so I also said earlier that we have angels for nations, and we have also some for for cities, and so it's very very important we get to know the differences, and you know. So that we know what to how to uh, live, and some of the things we have to look for, you know, when we are in such you know situation like that, we will understand if our answers are not coming. It's not because God God doesn't want to answer us. Something maybe something is wrong somewhere, and you have got to know the scriptures to be able to, you know, use wisdom. Okay. So, um, and it's so a what? But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. Can you imagine? And behold, listen to this Michael, one of the chief prince, came to help me. So, Michael is not the only what? Chief prince. He said, Michael, one of the chief princes. Did you hear that? We hear it's very, very important, and I'm stressing that because we all think, or most of us think, that Michael is the only chief prince. No, it's not the only one, but he's a he's a head of all the chief prince. So, for instance, under Michael, Michael has. A whole lot of angels that works with him. Okay, so he's not the only chief prince, but the head of chief prince. I have, you know, uh, written stuff about Michael. He is the head of the chief princes. And there is an S right here. I keep forgetting. Right here. At the end of the prince. So it says what? Michael, one of the chief prince, came to help me. For I have I have been left there alone with the king of Persia. Alright. So that's another thing for, for us to grab over here. As, uh, in terms of uh, ans answers that we seek when we pray is very very important and uh, some of the names that uh, the Bible refers to the angel here is a what is it's stated is a what kingdom of Persia by the prince of the kingdom of Persia did you hear that and so every country have an angel whether good or bad I believe, in fact, there's good and bad angel for every country. Yeah. So when the people have been have turned their back on God, God will give in, and then the devil, the the evil prince of that area, 
controls the area and so they do no no peace uh, everything goes wrong but when they are we call they turn around and the uh, the angel that is of god is ruling and in charge everything they do they prosper that's how it works and so that's another reference here so we're gonna go um let me see to the next one let's see what we have here all right i said unless we we are we teach the whole counsel of god which includes angels you have to study angels we cannot know the benefit and the blessings that's it's not possible to know about god god and his will and everything else without knowing his angels we have to study it we, we really have to okay we really have to study it all right let's read um we are getting somewhere we are doing well let's see all right uh yeah okay let's see um let's go to act 20. let's go to act 20 and then we read from 27. I read for I have not shown to declare to you the whole counsel of God see it's like the whole counsel of God let me see what it says from the 26 therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men okay that's not what I'm looking for Let's go to 28 and see if there's anything that will reflect. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among the which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. Okay, so to be able to uh, teach the saints, the children of God, a shepherd entrusted with a sheep you will need to familiarize yourself with the counsel of God to be able to tell of it that's why it says what for I have not shown to declare to the whole counsel of God if you don't know anything about angels you don't know about God's word we are lacking we don't, we don't know we have got to know okay so um, that's what 27 is saying let's go to back to we're gonna go back to first Corinthians we are looking for nine uh, four nine all right four nine All right, and I read. For I think that God has displayed us, the apostles, last as men condemned to death, for we have been made what a spectacle to the world, both to angels oh, and to men. You hear that? So God has made us known to the world and to his angels. I read again. For I think that God has displayed, displayed, present, you know, as 
the apostles last as men condemned to death so they were presented as guilty and pronounced them dead and they made public show of them to the world and both to men and angels so angels witness and men also what they had to put up with so that's another reference so angels were there before the crea uh, creation of the second creation the creation of man and so they know they know they know more than we do <laughs> but yes so they are not God so they don't know it all okay so the Bible said they were they, they watch creation and they rejoice okay so uh, angels are very smart they are very they are they are they have greater wisdom than us okay and they know more about God than us because they spend time with God they are with God so when they have come I will say this later but when they come to us or when we encounter angels uh, the reason why they are so powerful because they have come from the presence of God that's why we can't you know stand in their presence they are that holy if they are not holy they cannot stand before the presence of God and because they are holy that's why they stand there so when they come they come with the holiness of God and so that's why when we see them we are all over the place and they carry you know uh, the presence of God so uh, it's very uh, telling why they are so powerful sometimes because God endowed them with certain things or attributes to carry out certain functions and so that's why some of them when you see them it's either fire on the and the, the power that is around them you can't just stand in their presence okay so uh, but yet they are not God all right so um, let's see um, they have uh, great strength I said enormous strength authority of angels encourages us okay and uh, they are never ending service to God should encourage us to motivate us Calista, excuse me Calista and so we're gonna go to let me see uh, Hebrews 1 again 6 no, just one, uh, one seven. Okay. All right, Hebrews one seven. And I read, and of the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirit and his ministers a flaming fire. There we go. I just said sometimes, you know, they are so powerful. He said what? Who makes his angels spirit? It's God. And his ministers a flaming fire. So can you imagine you encounter an angel that is so powerful and then he's full of fire or the sword that is in his hand is fire <laughs> that is why some of them we some of us we can't stand in their presence you know i hear so much uh, stories about uh, people that encounters uh, angels and some of them the angels have to carry them and give them strength so that they can stand on their feet so they can speak to them it's just amazing but it is very true of what the scripture is saying here okay um, just like I'm sitting here and it's not that some of them are not here maybe God has sent one to come and give specific instructions or say something to me as soon as the angel gets here and you don't necessarily have to see them and what I'm telling you I did not see 
but I felt as soon as they enter your room, you will know you quickly you you know they are there, <laughs> and so uh, it's just amazing. You you will, you will know they are there. Their presence is so powerful, you can't escape it. They touch and let you know they are there. And some of them too, they will not show their whole body, their face, but they will they will give you. I don't know how to describe the sign, so you know that the angel is standing there. But it's in a, a either how do I think? It's either in a in an image, or I don't know how to describe it. But it's like a fog or some sort of uh, a sign that they give you that lets you know there's an angel there and then you have you are ready to listen what they have to what they they, they have to say to you okay um, so let's see oh I'm doing well I pray that we finish this <laughs> so uh, this one so we can carry on with the next ones uh, what time do we have okay all right you are doing well all right so now let's go to i'm very happy that we got to where we are now uh, because there's a lot of information i hope i didn't bore all of you um let's go to some of the uh description of angels okay so um some of the terms we have already uh, gone through some of them already the bible uh, describes them okay some of the terms they used to describe them one i said host the word host if you you know host of heaven so you can see host and yesterday oh no saturday morning i said um the next word is creature uh, creatures and i said cherubim and seraphims are known as creatures so when you hear the heavenly uh, uh creatures they are referring to seraphim and cherubim and there are other ones okay but cherubim and seraphim are the ones that are the Bible actually named as being creatures. Okay. Then we have dominions. You see, we read about dominions, and then we have principalities, and we have powers. We have sons of God. Okay. And then we have beasts. We talk. About, we read about beasts, and then the final one. That's interesting. The final one is the manai is what the term called angel of the lord all right this is going to be interesting uh, when we hear the angel of the lord there are two arguments that are out there one talk about the fact that the angel of the lord is the lord jesus christ himself appearing and taking a form of an angel or uh, angel you know sometimes angel god allowed them to take a human form to appear to us the angel of the lord when the bible specifically says the angel of the lord the lord jesus christ himself is the one that has taken his uh is the uh, body natural body and to appear to human beings to communicate with them that's what the angel of the lord i believe it is but then there are also angels when the Holy Spirit doesn't give you insight to that it will be very difficult to tell whether it's Jesus or not or I should say people have a hard time not knowing that it's Jesus they sound like him so you have to be really tuning into the holy spirit and i believe that's what happens and there are angels that carry out certain duties that sound like a lord so when they are talking to you you really have to pay attention so i personally i am grateful that from the beginning the lord started doing certain things with me for instance, you just come and stand by me and you start quoting scriptures. 
and then tell him using scriptures to tell me what he wants to say to me or use scriptures or call one of his name so he will introduce himself by telling me his name and there's no way you'll miss it and so this is a, a something uh, an issue that is uh, the scholars some of them uh, argue about okay so uh, the term is used indicating the presence of a deity in angelic form did you hear that so the lord will use his own you know he will appear take his human body and appear to us in angelic form and to communicate with us and that's what i think is joseph had with with the lord and the angel of the lord I know that because he comes to me like the, the, this form and then he comes to me as the Lord you know holy himself and then he does stand here or he will just uh, come to me without me seeing him physically but I know he's there and he'll be talking to me and the first thing he will do is either he said you know one of the things he said to me he said what uh, they said I'm coming, but they don't tell you what to do or what needs to be done. He, straight out. He has no time to be playing around. He is telling me what, needs, what he wants to tell me by making a statement. So I know it's him. And then he will come and say, he said, I am. He's telling you I'm here. So he calls his name out to introduce himself that I'm, he's, he's there. He's present with you. But it's not an angel. This is what I find out about angels. <laughs> As the Bible said, be careful, be careful you don't offend your angels. They are very straight. They are very straight. A Lord is very gentle. That's one key. I'm not saying all angels are like that but when they are on assignment you will know when the Lord is talking to you there's no way you're gonna miss it it's just his nature his character but when an angel of the Lord comes to you he's a soldier he says he's an army officer he's a warrior an angel comes to accomplish God's agenda he has a task he has to do he hasn't got time to play around Unless it's a friend, a friendly angel or angel that's standing, waiting for you to speak so that he can go and do. They are different from the warrior angels. I have one that you know when I'm sitting down and uh, <laughs> I've not said anything to him, or for a while, or the, in the morning he want to let you know remind you that hey, I am here. He will tickle me. <laughs> Or you know, give a cessation, and I'm like, okay, Holy Spirit, what do you have to say to me? So I don't speak to directly to the angel; I speak to the Holy Spirit. When I, I feel that or I hear that, anything, I say, Holy Spirit, what are you trying to say to me? Then the angel will be speaking. So that's why we don't pray to angels. We don't pray uh, pray to angels because they the, they work hand in hand with the Holy Spirit. And so if anything I anything they try to come to, I don't care what they say to me, I'm asking the Holy Spirit. Because uh, we, ha we have to be careful. We don't worship them, we don't really concentrate on them. Because they are not God. The first thing I do, I call on my friend, the Holy Spirit. What are you, what are you, what are you trying to say to me? What are you saying here? Because it's the Holy Spirit that dispatched them. They, you know what I mean. They work hand in hand with the Holy Spirit. And so, um, that word, angel of the Lord, I know for a fact is the Lord himself. But there are other angels that sounds 
and speak like him just like this okay let me give you an example so god created us in his image so we are what and in his likeness right like in god created he gave part of his, we are not fully god god put something of himself in us in his likeness so we are not the same as god but like his ways if i'm making sense here okay so if the angels were created by christ himself and they carry out his agenda there's one thing about michael that when i get to it i will let you know i think michael is just like him <laughs> and uh, you have to know and the michael is like just like 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 our lord is so powerful and masculine and the man the angel of the this angel the prince is so mighty even when his foot when he put his foot down chief everything shakes and power comes you you, you can't escape that i watch him he allow me to watch him <laughs> He just like a, a, a lord. He's just carries, you know, how do I say it? There's majestic something, something beautiful about him. There are stories about Michael and the Christ, our Lord himself, but I don't believe that. But he asks, he's like him. He acts like him. So that is why some people got this angel wrong. I had two wonderful men making, uh, talking also, they were talking about angels, the experiences, and you know, on and on, when at uh, the time that God asked me to study. And so I was going everywhere. I was, you know, getting to a library, going online to see what I have and to compare because uh, uh, the, the father was telling me that I should I try and also listen to what people other people uh he has given to other people and to learn and see what they have which i was not doing and so i don't think i do enough because there's no time and so every time that i have to study something i have a hard time doing it with just anybody but there are uh, four men i believe they said one is going home with, to be with the lord but this guy is amazing. I have to take time to, I've made a plan to take time to study and read about his, some of the work that God did with him. But the three that I left is equally fantastic. And so, but I saw two of them, this guy making, having discussions on one of them, their uh, TV station about angels. And it was fascinating to hear what they have to say about the term angel of the lord they actually believe one of them actually believe is the uh it's an angel that acts like christ and speak like him but they they did not have name for that angel i believe uh i'm not saying michael is but michael is very very like christ the way I saw him and the way he behaves, I'm like, wow. I was just, even his structure. Michael is big. But I don't know whether he'll be bigger because when you met, when you meet our Lord and in different locations, uh, in different circumstances, it's different. You are looking at somebody different. Not in terms of who he is, but the form. And so uh, it will not be fully right for me to say that. But Michael is a whole man when he's coming. When you see him, whoo, he has very long, beautiful hair. And so, but when he, you know, he lifts his foot and put it down, the mountains were shaking. And I, I'm like, gee, it's so powerful. So we can get it wrong okay but the the word angel of the lord is our lord himself okay let's go to genesis 16 and let uh 
Mm. Let me read uh, Exodus first. Okay, let's go to Exodus three. All right, and we are looking for two to four. Let's see what it says. Three, two, three, and four. And I read, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. Did you hear that? Angel, another reference again. Angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from a midst of a bush. See? I was telling you some of them to adjust they are just fire so he looked and behold the bush was burning with fire but the bush was not consumed right so it's not about the fire it's the power behind it okay you are we are one we see that we are watching the power of god all right, I'll read again. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame. You see that? Angel of the Lord, like I said, some of them they appear to you, they are just fire. They are just fire, they're full of fire. Okay. And so it said, and and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flame, in flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Three. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. It is great sight indeed. Why the bush does not burn? And then four says what? So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. You see that? When God is coming, he is carried or transported by an angel. Okay? And then that goes, that scripture tells us going when we go back. And I said, when you encounter an angel, they are so powerful because some of them are just fire. Because they have done what? They have come from the presence of God. So over here is very telling, just like what I told you. Moses saw an angel of the Lord appear to him. But then what? Later on, he what? God called him. He said, "Look." So God. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, "Moses, Moses." And Moses answered, said, "Saying, Here I am." So when angel of the Lord appeared to you, just know without a shadow that the Holy Spirit is right there with you. They have been sent by God. They have been sent by God. So we will do well, and it, it will not be good to worship them, but to acknowledge that their presence that is so mighty and powerful is because they have come from the throne room, okay? And that's why they are that mighty and fiery okay so let's look for we are still in genesis 22 let's go back here oh, oh i've left there sorry i wasn't there again um hold on didn't i read this okay i'll go i'll go to genesis let me let me go to genesis 22 let's go to 22 and i'll do the 11 first 22, 11. Before I can come up. Alright. And 11 says, But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven 
and said, Abraham, 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 Abraham. So he said, Here I am. And twelve said, And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad, or do anything to him, for now I have now I know that you fear God, since since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Then Abraham lift, lifted his eyes and looked, and there before him was a ram caught in a thicket by eight horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up to a burnt offering instead of his son. What am I reading here? To tithe him. Yeah. You see that? Abraham encountered an angel of the Lord. And then what? He said what? For now, he said what? Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from, from me. Did you see that? The first part sounds like angel talking to Abraham. And then the second part is God himself talking. Let's look at it again. He said, and, and he said, do not lay your hand. Who said? And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son from from your son your only son from me you see now god is talking here but angel was the one abraham encountered first and then god said you know speaks to abraham okay let's look at what judges is saying let's go to judges 6 We are looking for 12. 12, 16. All right. Oh, no. Um, sorry, I got it wrong. It's Judges 6. Judges 6. And uh, it's 12, 16. Yeah. Judges 6. 12, 16. There we go. And I read 12 to 16. And the angel of the Lord, you see that account of an angel appeared to him again and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon, that's Gideon here. Gideon said to him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with, you, with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about saying did not the lord bring us up from egypt but now the lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of a mid of the medians medianites sorry then the lord turned to him and said go in go in this might is this supposed to be in his might well, it says, go in this might of yours. Okay. Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Uh oh. All right. So he said to him, My Lord, how can I sa save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in the Manasseh. And I am the least of my father's house. And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Wow, that's Gideon, mighty man. 
very typical. <laughs> and so, um, the appearance of the, I forgot to say that, the appearance of the Lord, which is the reference that I gave you, that I said, um, the reference that is, in the, the Bible refers as the angel of the Lord, the terminology that, you know, is the, is the what? Is appearance of Christ is the pre indicate that appearance indicates the presence of of the phrase meaning an appearance of Christ so they call it Christophany okay that's the word I wanted to give you Christophany and so um, yeah there are arguments about all this let's look at before i i just leave it let's look instead of leaving it let's look at look um look look one and then i'm looking for 11. look one eleven then an angel there we go. Of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Okay. So we see the reference an angel of the Lord appeared. Okay. And uh, if you go to Acts, Acts 12. Acts 12. And we are looking for 7 and 23. He said and I read and behold an angel of the Lord stood by him and a light shone in the person and he struck Peter on the side and raised him up saying arise quickly and his chains fell off his hand and that's the appearance of Christ okay and let's see what 23 says then immediately the angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God and he was eaten by worms and died. Ooh. Okay, so uh, that is our, our Lord himself. Okay, that is him. I strongly believe that. Alright, so now uh, earlier I gave you uh, apart from the angel of the Lord reference I gave you eight names that uh, the Bible reference or referred to angels okay and uh, I hope you guys uh, we are writing things down that's why I took time to I uh, got you know all those scriptures so that we can go back and you know study it ourselves so I hope that uh, you are actually uh, making note okay that's why uh, we, we got a reference and so I'm gonna go to this is very important that I, I talk about it I'm going to go to Psalm 97 to uh, move on here or uh, reference something that we should all be paying attention to when we are talking about God, what God are we referring to? Is it God of Israel or angel of the Lord or what, what God? So let's, some people don't know there are differences in that. So let's look at Psalm 97. All right. So in Psalm 97, we are looking for verse 7. And I read, let all be put to shame who serve carved image images and i read again it said it's uh, psalm 97 and verse 7 it reads let all be put to shame who serve carved image what is a carved image a carved image anything that is dead anything that is made out of food or uh, small gods 
okay and then next uh, line tells us so who boasts of idols so idolatry you know I people who serve small gods okay this is what I have here this is referring to small gods okay it's not God of Israel anything that was created was created by God so unless anybody else can come and tell me otherwise we have only one true God who created all things okay so and the only one we should worship and serve is God of Israel God himself not have or uh, raving images okay and then he said what let me read the whole thing again let all be put to shame who serves so if you are not serving God the Bible said that we should put you to shame because you are serving what carved image okay said so I read again let all be put to shame who serve carved images who boast of idols worship him all you gods and that gods here is not with capital G it's always with small g okay the only god you should address or write with a g uh, big j is god that use the big j to address god and the small g to address you know small gods and all the uh, wood carving images okay all right so that is so when people are talking about god you better ask them <laughs> they might not be referring to you our god okay and they they might be referring to an an idol all right which is small god all right and so god made all things and uh like i said he made us little lower than the angels that we read earlier in hebrews 2 7 okay and uh another reference is the uh, sons of God that is in Job 38 and 7 let me see if I can get them Job 38 and 7 All right. so I'm looking for 38 and 7 alright Alright, so Job 38 7 and it's, it reads when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. You see that this sons of God reference is referring to angels and the morning stars are also referred to angels. They are angels that uh, God calls them morning stars and sons of God so the Bible is very clear on that so when you see the morning stars and sons of God they are all angels okay all right and then maybe one more let's go to uh, Daniel 25 Daniel 25 and maybe I should do another one here. Let me check. Let me check some three. Some three, and I'm looking for 39. not what was I doing all right we're gonna let's skip that one let's skip that one and go to uh, Daniel 3 
Lady. Then he answered and said, and see, hold on, let's start again. Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt and f and the form of the fourth is like the son of god what is the bible saying here uh oh it was an angel so the fourth one is that it's like the son of god This is uh, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were uh, let go out of the prison. Okay, before um, the uh, the chains were the doors were open for them to go. The guard sees instead of three people he sees four people that's what he's describing here and the fourth one he said it looks like the fourth one looks like the son of son of god so even the pagans knew the difference they could they know they just refused to serve so the fourth person they were describing here is an angel of the lord because i think the purity about the angel that's what they it was being referred to here okay and then we're gonna uh talk about yeah the sons of the mighty that is psalm 29 1 okay the sons of the mighty okay and uh give uh, give on give unto us give unto the lord O oh, you mighty ones so the signs of the mighty that's uh psalm 21 sorry 29 1 sons of the might of the mighty psalm 29 1 says give unto the unto the lord all you mighty ones okay and then psalm 89 says for who in the heavens can be compared to the lord who among the sons of the mighty can be likened to the Lord all right and then we see Isaiah said the Lord of hosts okay Isaiah 13 13 the Lord of hosts and Joel said Joel 3 11 says cause your mighty ones to go down to go down there O Lord and they are all angels the sons of the mighty okay mighty ones is you know it's the same as the sons of the mighty that's what the bible is saying and then we see it again here sons of the mighty here um and then what the lord of hosts the lord of hosts is referring to christ he's the head he's the one created for uh created them for himself so he's the head they all uh, respond to Christ okay so Lord of all the angels that's what the Lord of hosts means the host is referring it's another term the Bible used to describe angels okay and then uh, uh, Joel 3 11 says cause your mighty ones to go to go down there oh Lord and then we see the watches told you there are watches <laughs> in heaven and uh i think part of the um uh, creatures are watches i told you about the pillars right and then you see them in, it's like you can only describe it as an animal but you know you can't use the word animal the bible calls them creatures and so uh the the angel is standing there but it's an angel it's standing there 
and I personally do not have words to describe them because they are pure too. They are very, very pure. Very, very pure. Very, very pure. It's amazing to watch. And uh, that is Daniel, Daniel 4, 12 to 14. I saw in the vision of, the head, of my head, I saw in the visions of my head while I while on my bed, and there was a watcher so uh, those days they they know they have seen and they know okay daniel um the the way god works with that daniel so daniel will know what he's looking at okay so he says what i saw in the visions of my head which means he was sleeping in a dream it's not a vision uh, of the day this is a vision of the night because he said what visions of my head while on my bed and there was a watcher a holy one coming down from heaven so he had a dream about it and then Isaiah said what I have set watchmen on your walls so there we go what references you know uh, names used to describe angels okay so angels are watchers okay they watch they protect and then we have the holy ones holy ones as Zachar zachariah 14 15. the matthew 25 31 says when the son of man comes in his holy glory in his glory and all the holy angels with him like i said before he coming back with his angels and that is matthew 25 31 and daniel uh, 8 13 reference the uh, angels he said that the holy one speaking the holy one speaking meaning the angel of the lord was talking to him okay the holy uh, holy ones and then uh the prince is, prince is the uh daniel's encounter if you remember with uh, uh the prince of kingdom of persia and that is daniel 10 13 and then you see 20 we have 20 21 and then 12 and 1 okay and then uh they mention michael and then prince Prince of Greece, that is 20, and then uh, we see the chief prince here, one of the chief prince, okay, that is uh, reference to Michael, and then 20, he said what, Prince of Greece, so in that encounter alone, Gabriel let Daniel know that uh, he has to go back, but when he was uh, uh, detain Michael have to come and help him but he has to fight uh, among the kingdom of Persia the prince of kingdom of Persia that's an angel and then prince of Greece is also an angel so you see repeatedly here again what I said earlier that angels we are every even nations have their own angels to guide every nation or I should say every country have their own angels one angel the main angel you know is a prince and then uh god's angels as well so we have good and bad angel angels for every nation and then we have the territorial ones on the cities and certain areas i encounter one uh oh this i had gone to help a, a minister that i met and uh she invited me to her church, so I tried to help her with her uh, evangelism. I think I've shared this story before. And uh, I had gone to door to door with, you know, handouts to give it to them. Like, not handouts, but like pamphlets and things like that to talk to people. And uh, it was after. <laughs> 
the 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 angel which is the demon angel in that area because that area is heavy and no none of the uh, members wanted to go anywhere to do anything so i'm like i'll go for you what do you mean by people you know let's go we have to talk to them but every time she has a reason to not being able to go so i would drive and i was happy to do it and so one day i was lying down sleeping and i could hear the holy spirit roberta roberta and i said i'm so tired i keep saying i'm so tired he said get up <laughs> i said i'm so tired and all of a sudden i keep saying i'm so tired eh? okay so you know so he's gonna show me what do i see i had a a, a double glass door where I was living that angel that demon angel in that area was up you know coming after me mm. was like what am I doing there preaching to people and putting you know it looks like I was trespassing but I was not trespassing so the Holy Spirit was trying to show me what is happening in the spirit I've never seen anything like it that you, he, this figure I'm looking at was very big and wide and tall and he had army uniform on. It's like he's telling me he's a warrior of the a area. When I saw that, the only thing was trying to get me to get up eh? and I said what? I was tired. When I saw that I, I got up, I jumped out of the bed and I went straight to from the point he was trying to open the glass door and come in and I put my hand up. And I command him, then he disappeared. <laughs> it was like a joke. I literally woke up and ran to where the doors are to face him. And I'm like, gee, if you listen, always listen to this, I was doing too much, but I was tired. I've been doing, going, going on and on and on working 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 but the body was so tired but the spirit is always alive so the holy spirit was calling me trying to tell me to, to command the, the thing to leave but i said what i was tired so i was sleeping <laughs> so he decided to show me rather if i'm not listening okay and i'll show you as soon as he did that i literally jump out and run straight to where the thing is was coming from as soon as I got it, he was just by Ogono. Oh, I put my hand out and he was gone. So this is another uh, example. When you have an angel of the Lord around you, the Holy Spirit will prompt, you know, a place, a protection around you. So you are always in good hands, okay? Something, you know, if anything, they protect you from harm as well, okay? so it's very very good that we get to know the angel angel of the lord excuse me god's angels and what they do and how we can relate to them and enjoy their services and the benefits to us okay and so then we go down to um thrones they rule they are, you know, they rule, the thrones rule. Um, you find, let's go to Colossians um, 1. I think I read it before. I don't I? Let me, let me go back. Colossians 1, 16. Stop it. That's one sixteen. Let's see. Yes, I read it. They are the rulers. Um, I already read, read it. That is the. Uh, let me read it again. For by him all things were created, that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. So that, those are the uh, thrones, and so the eight is the same. The powers are the same. They also rule, and uh, 
so is the dominion and principality uh, the powers are the authoritarian ones okay but dominions have exercised power to rule and uh, thrones are just rulership but um, powers is you know they have a, a authority and then principality are the ones that you find them in government okay and then morning star we've read about it already in uh, job uh, 38 and all the sons of god shouted with joy and then the beasts we find the beasts are the revelation 4 6 and 8 uh, no the the four not the beast but yeah the beast they are the four living creatures and uh full of eyes and front and back and uh, we see the same referencing in ezekiel as well ezekiel 1 6 11. so revelations revelation 4 6 and 8 that's when you find the four living creatures and they are full of eyes in front and the back okay and both of them have each one of them have four faces four wings hand of a man under their wings and on their side and four sides of each have four faces and four wings and they elect uh, let's go to we have not read about elect I can't remember read about elect so let's go to first Timothy Okay, first Timothy, and I'm looking for five twenty-one. All right, I have not read it. So test all things. Hold fast what is good. All right. Oh, what am I doing here? It's Timothy. I'm looking for. <laughs> uh, I went to Thessalonians. Um, 521. Where am I? This is okay. Yeah, together. 521. There it is. All right, let's read Thanks, Uh, 521. I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels. Did you hear that? the elect angels that you observe these things without prejudice so they are not prejudice okay doing nothing with partiality right there we go the angels uh, can't take sides they only have the interests of God what they assignment are they cannot be partial they can't they don't have favoritism okay all right and so that is the scripture so we have some attributes of angels and i think i will finish here i'll finish it i'll finish it then you can start a new set so some of the attributes are of angels uh, so what angels uh, God created angels first to serve him they possess great strength and superior intelligence to serve God a company of angels are organized and they are in company of all a multitude of heavenly hosts the Apostle John encounter with an angel falling at his feet I think we read that earlier and then twin, Revelation 22 we see that uh, worshiping angels are not accepted on uh, no this is for Colossians 2 8 but God's uh, Paul's encounter was Revelation 2 2 8 okay and uh, angels uh, very strength they have highly strength strength and uh, intelligence and uh, confirmed like you know their holiness is confirmed and so I'm going to read two scriptures for that and then we can move to the uh, 
rankings okay so we're looking i'm looking for look i'll do look 213 first look 213 Look two thirteen. All right. All right. So I read. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying. You know, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. All right, so we see uh, angels here mentioned what we're doing is a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God. Okay, that's Luke, and that's what uh, the attributes, some of the attributes were saying, were saying. And so let's go to First Corinthians. 14. Take this out. All right, 14, and I'm looking for 40. Let all things be done decently in order. Let all things be done decently in order. And then we see that in Col Colossians, let me go, it's uh, that the one is 683. No, it's not, it's uh, 218. 218. Eighteen. What did he say? And he says, "Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in the false humility and worship of angels." Did you hear that? Worship of angels. He said, "Let no one cheat you of your reward." taking delight in false humility and worshiping angels so like i said before we cannot worship angels because they are not god they are the ones actually ministering to us okay so it's an abomination to worship angels okay and then bowing down to them that's the humility part it's, it, the bible calls it false humility intruding into those Things which he has not seen, vainly, vainly puffed up by his flesh mind. So it's no, no, you don't do that. Okay, you don't worship angels. You don't do that. Let me see a revelation, then we can move on here. We're almost there to the end. Uh, revelation 22. And I'm looking for eight. And it says, Now I, John, saw and heard these things. And when I heard and saw, I fell to worship before the feet of the angel. You see that? Who showed me these things? But then he said to me, See that? You do not do that. What is he referring to? The fact that John fell on his fell on fell on his feet and then worshiped the angel. And the angel said, What? No, make sure you don't do that again. You don't do that. For I am your what? Your fellow servant. He was his the angel is telling John that he, I'm just like you. 
So why would you bow down to me? I'm not God. And of your brethren, the prophets. So the angel is saying that I'm just like you. Just like your prophets. So he, the angel come to do what? To prophesy to us, to send us a message. To reveal the mind of God. And of those who keep the words of this book. Worship God. Not angels. Okay? Alright. So. We are almost there. Oh my goodness. I am so glad that we, are, we were able to go through. Okay? So. I put ranks of angels. And there are several of them. Okay? Uh, we already read that. Uh, uh, Colossians 1 and 18. We read that. And then you see uh, Jude, Jude 9. I don't think, yeah, Jude 9 is also there. Jude 9, we can read uh, Jude 9. And then uh, we go to the workings of angels. Let me, hold on. Let me read it. Jude 9. And I read. Yet Michael, the archangel, see, that's his, uh, Michael's, uh, Angel Michael's ranking is an archangel. So Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of Moses dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. So we see that uh, Michael is being described here as an archangel, which is one of the prominent angels. Top, okay? And then uh, if we go down some of the workings of the angels um, they stand like I said before they stand in the presence of God and worship him day and night we saw that in uh, Matthew 18 10 we saw that in Hebrews 1 6 and 5 Re uh, Revelation 5 11 okay and then uh, we have children the uh, we have angels that protect children and delivering God's children. That one we have not read, so we're going to go there. And that is Genesis 19. Genesis 19. I'm glad that we, we stayed with the course. So that we can move ahead. And make God proud. Alright. So... That is uh, 11. So Genesis 19, 11, and I read. And they struck the men who were at the doorway of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they became weary trying to find the door. Okay? So uh, angels protecting... Uh, I think who was this? Uh, Abraham's uh, nephew. Uh, oh God, his name is not coming. Uh, yeah, because when God was gonna destroy Sodom and Sodom and Gomorrah, and send the angels. Remember when Abraham was debating with God not to destroy Sodom if he can find. Uh, you know, people that are, are righteous in there. And Abraham's uh, nephew was there with his family. Okay, who is Lot, that's it, Lot. And so when the angels went there, this, this is the account the Bible is giving here. So let's go to another one that I have here. That is Psalm 91, 11. Let me see what it says. Psalm 91, 11. 11 11 okay Psalm 91 
11. Twenty-one, eleven. Okay. And I read, For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Did you hear that? Angels are given charge by God to watch over us in everything that we do daily to keep us safe okay and then uh, we already read Daniel and so some of the uh, if you are writing write down Daniel 3 28 and then Daniel 6 22 and then Acts 5 19 going to all of that and so hooray we are almost there wonderful i'm glad that you come every time that we come on here holy spirit send us out here and you come and join us so i mean i pray that you are enjoying the teaching as i am and so let's look at it it's a what uh hebrews 1 14 we wrote that an angels are not are they not all ministering spirit sent to serve those who will inherit salvation we did that earlier and that's hebrews uh 1 14 okay and then i said the angel uh angel that uh, angels accompany us in gen, in our journey too that one we have not read yet so i'm gonna go there let's read at at 8 unless I've done that it's okay at 826 I don't think I've read it at 826 and I read and an angel of the law spoke seeing the references there to Philip saying arise and go towards the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza this is desert so you see philip on his way and angel of the lord shows up speaking to him and giving him direction okay so he can find his destination which is very very important and i have angels traveling with me all the time and i think i remember i was going to look for i was doing a function i needed like a a well a certified uh, kitchen to do that in and uh, I was going to find a man in a I think it was a Catholic Church or something like that one of those churches most of the time their uh, kitchen is certified so that I can I can do what I have to do in there and I couldn't find my way and as I was praying before I knew it I saw a whole host of angels and then I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit and before I knew it I drove I was driving I'm gonna drive past the destination was on my right hand side even though I had the GPS but it was very tricky to find it because I keep circling it it said the GPS you are there but I couldn't find it before I knew it I was there okay so these are some of those things and so uh, this uh, this account are so so real and uh, it helps in our lives make life easy for us okay so we have to enjoy and make good use of what God has given us okay so we have to get to, get to know uh, God's angels okay and then uh, also when uh, like Daniel we read Daniel prayed and was looking for waiting on God for answers and the answer had not come at the same time the same angels they'll come and give you interpretation of what maybe a vision or dream or something that God has shown you they come back or uh, God will send them to us and give us interpretation of God's word okay and some of the scriptures that I put down for us for interpretation of God's word God's to God's people is Daniel 7 16 
Daniel 10 5 the, and then 11 Zachariah and it's 1 9 okay and then also uh, Zachariah 13 14 so 13 to 14 then 19 okay and then uh, angels on Saturday morning I was saying that they carry and uh, God's agenda they to execute God's will okay and I read that uh, Genesis 19 12 uh, Genesis uh, so Genesis 19 12 okay and then 13 and then we have second Samuel 24 16 and then we have Ezekiel 9 2 and then we have 5 7 and then we have Acts 22 23 okay and the affairs of the nations like I said earlier are guided by them as well which is the Daniel 10 12 to 13 and then 20 okay so uh, let's go and look for uh, let me look for one more scripture that's second Kings okay let's look for second Kings 19 Alrighty. 19 and then I'm looking for 35 oh, I read this as well but oh, that's okay so I read it I read it again 1935 yes, and I and I read and it came to pass on a certain night that the angel of the Lord went out and killed the camp of Assyrians 185,000 and when people arose early in the morning there were the cops all dead so God wants to go to war, he sends an angel. <laughs> I think I posted something that either last month or something like that, or two months ago, where I saw, you know, um, clouds, angels uh, described as clouds as well. I saw dark clouds racing from nowhere, from my left hand side, I believe. If I'm not getting it wrong, and going so fast to towards the right hand side, and they have that cloud was very dark, and just as they pass from nowhere, I saw another cloud coming, but this one is very pure, chasing after the dark cloud. What I was watching, I was watching angels fighting in the supernatural realm. So sometimes there's an issue before we see here with our naked eyes. That problem, any war, anything, it has been fought in the spiritual realm. And it's, it's, it's done by angels. Just like the angel went and slaughtered all those people. They were sleeping. That's what the scriptures were saying. They were sleeping. But the angel of the Lord was sent to go and take them all out. And God didn't have to move their finger himself. He has he desire he created the angels to carry out his agenda. Just like us, we are here. We are here, that's why we are able to work in hand in hand. We are gods, you know, we are like gods. Angels on earth work working hand in hand with the angels in heaven. So that's why they get a message, God gives them a message, they come and give it to us anything that we have to do and then we do it here just like them they fight in the heavens and in not just heavens they do it here too but we, you cannot see them they do it in the uh, supernatural realm okay so angels are very very important if for instance i myself if i want something done 
because they have given it, God has given them to us. So I charge the angels in the name of Jesus and I send them to go and carry out that particular assignment that I want them to do. And I instruct them to bring their assignment back to me, meaning I want to know the results. So for instance, 103, 20, when I use this Psalm 103, and that's why you hear me, bless the Lord, his angels, that are sending strength, that do his commandment, I can unto the word of the Lord or the voice of the Lord. I said, I despite you right now, go. And I said, blah, 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 whatever our assignment is. And I said, I despite you now, go in Jesus' name and bring your assignment to me. By that time, the assignment is in the prayer after I recite or I say, I read it. Uh, I charge him with uh, Psalm 103 20. Then after that, I give him, I say what I want the angel to go and do. And I said, and bring your assignment back to me, meaning I want to know the results. So I'll be here and then I'll be having visions or seeing what I send, I send the angel to do. I want, if something I want to see, I want to see. And then when the Holy Spirit or say something to me with that with regards to that issue and I'm not clear on I want it a certain way I said Holy Spirit I want to see it then he will show it to me in a vision so we need to see we need to get to know angels that is why they are there to help us and some of us it's taken us a long time some of us still we don't know because we're not taught this is why it's very important because we are in the end times okay there are certain things that are coming we need to have knowledge about God's angels, what they do, so that we can use them in for a benefit. That is why God gave them to us. And so, you see why it's important we get to know. That is why I'm also, because if I'm going to be teaching tongues and things like that, angels play part in all of this. We don't have a clue about that. And so, this is all about get, getting good teaching. And knowing who you are and what God has given us everything that we need is here it's in this book this is the map that God has given us his word to lead us and help us live this life and the one to come and so we have got to know okay all right I'm glad that we got to this point if you don't know how excited I am I don't know about you i know you are happy to be here but i'm excited uh to be sitting here and doing this with you okay and so the last bit i want the last part i want to say is like angels they should not be strangers to us angels were involved i said this before in the ministry the life and the ministry of our lord jesus christ okay they were all involved and he gave what that he gave him gave him strength in the garden okay and just gave a lot strength it was an angel who removed the what roll back the tomb the stone from the tomb you know what i mean and so uh, uh they were all there and uh, what i said were the the angels were involved in the ministry in the life of jesus christ the scriptures i have is mighty four four eleven and then strength I gave for the garden. I, I have uh, Luke 22 for the three. And, it's, and uh, the next one for the rolling back of the stone from the tomb is Matthew 28, 2 and 7. And then even the, uh, for the ascension, that is um, Acts 1, 10, 11. Let's read. Let's read the four, four last scriptures, okay? Let's go to Matthew. Matthew 4. Let's go to Matthew 4. I'm glad that you came and I'm very uh, grateful that you came to listen, listen to us. And if you're going to listen to us later, I'm still happy for you because we're going to hear what uh, God or the Holy Spirit is trying to say to us. Let me put this, you know, it's a little bit later, lighter, too bright. Okay, so um, we are reading matthew 4 and verse 11 okay then the devil left him and behold angels came and ministered to him this uh, scripture is talking about when um the angel went and tempted the lord okay uh, tried to offer him the whole world and so 
and he told me told him to get be, be behind him and the angels came and ministered to him okay so that's the uh, Matthew 4 11 and then we're gonna go to uh, Matthew 28 2 okay 28 2 28 2 says what 2 to 7 rather uh, it says and I read now after the Sabbath as the first day of the week began to dawn Mary Magdalene and uh, and the other and the other Mary came to see the tomb and behold there was a great earthquake for an angel you see that that's the reference of an angel being there of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it okay his countenance was like lightning you, hear, you see that and his clothing as white as snow and the guard then the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men <laughs> because they have come from the presence of God okay but the angel answered and said to the woman do not be afraid for I know that you seek see that's their wisdom for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified he is not here for he is risen yes he is as he said come see the place where the Lord laid and so quickly and tell his disciples no he said go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen yes he's risen from the dead and indeed he is going before you into Galilee there you will see him behold I have told you how did does the angel know that as he's giving message to Mary to tell Mary that that he should go and tell the uh, apostles that Jesus is risen but Jesus himself what is going before her I truly believe this is the Lord himself is the Lord himself speaking to Mary here taking a human body you know the earthly body just like as he do you know to speak to Mary here is the Lord himself 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 all right so let's go to Luke Luke 22 Luke 22 so we are looking for 43 and I read and and be, being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat, and his sweat became like great drops of blood, falling down to the ground. And that is oh no, I'm looking for the uh, let's let's look for 43. I just read 44. That's not what I'm looking for. So it's 20. Um, look 22 for the three that I wanted. Then. An angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. Okay, so you see, angel giving strength. All right, and then let's read Acts one and ten to eleven. All righty, and while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel who also said men of Galilee 
why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Some are saying it's, it's an angel, but I think it's Jesus himself. And then if you look at 11, it said, Who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus who was taken from, taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. And so that brings us to the end of this session. How did we do with time? Not bad. And so this is the angels, God's angels. And so just recapping, we started uh, introducing God so far, God and the activities uh, the angels do with God, and we said they worship God and uh, they protect God, and then they carry God to places, meaning they transport God to uh, wherever God wants to go, and uh, the particular angels that do that, we call them uh, creatures. And the uh, two particular angels that uh, carry God, that are part of the creatures, are cherubim and cherub. Yes, they are called cherubim and seraphim. They are the ones that uh, carry God from place to place. Okay. And uh, we, I gave some examples, and then I gave a, a description for those angels and uh we went ahead and give some uh the, those as examples are uh, experiences that we find in the bible and also uh, some of the experiences that i have god has given me and so we gave that account on saturday morning and we described a little bit of the things that or uh, what the cherubims and seraphims look like when you encounter them what they look like okay and they are fit some of their features and uh, we came back and we talk about uh, angels when they were created where the name uh, derived from and also the fact that they are supernatural and heavenly beings and there there's no uh, woman angels it's only men and they are described in the masculine only only and so and then I said um, there there are reasons why people think there are uh, there are women angels and that is because God has created some of them so beautiful when you see them you might think you are looking at a woman but they are not and I said one particular angel that I know that he's, he's like that is the angel Gabriel which I encountered him uh, in my dream when he was sitting and just watching over me okay and so uh, we explained that and I said there are uh, 108 count or referencing in Old Testament alone for uh, angels because uh, some of us we didn't think the ref the angels you know there are only few referencing but there are approximately 108 in old testament and 165 did i say that yeah 165 in new testament and so we talk about that and then uh, when we talk about the fact that the the angels are not like us they don't have organisms that they can marry or things you know like we, we do but they are created a little bit higher than us as human beings and they have extensive wisdom and they are very many you, they are, you cannot count they are uncountable okay and then we came back here and then we talk about 
uh, how some of the angels, God's angels, rebelled against him, and they were cast down. They were sorry, they, they were cast down by God and put put them in chains, and they are waiting uh, for judgment at the end of time. Okay, and then we came out down here, and then we ask, uh, we talk about the fact that they are spirits, and uh, they rejoice and minister to those who inherit salvation okay and then we talk about fallen angels and we finish fallen angels when we talk about how um, angels they sin against God they rebel against God and uh, God did indeed like I said a few minutes ago chain them and put them down in hell waiting to be judged at the appropriate time okay and then we ended up there and today we started with good angels and bad angels and angels that opposes uh, bad angels that opposes good angels and i gave gabriel and daniel uh encounter at uh at the time when daniel had prayed and waiting for uh to hear a response from god but even though God has sent angel to come and bring Daniel the message, he was kept and detained by an evil angel, and uh, he has to call on Michael uh, to come and help him to bring the message to Daniel. And through that process, uh, Gabriel had to go back and fight uh, the prince of Persia and the Greek uh, prince, prince of uh, uh, Greece. Okay. And so we have, when I was trying to say how, when you pray, we pray sometimes an answer is not coming, it's, it's delayed. Uh, we have to pay attention. We have to know these things so that we know that something is holding it. And when God has ans uh, not answered, it doesn't mean that he has forgotten. Maybe there's something blocking us. There's something in our way we have to take care of, okay? And pray and God, ask God for direction and uh and the reason why we have to pay attention to all of this and then we came down here and i said we have to be able to study god's angels to know the will of god and the mind of god totally if you have to teach the whole counsel of god okay and then i said i gave descriptions of names uh, terms that are used to describe angels as a host creation thrones dominion principalities powers sons of god and beasts and then we talk about angel of the Lord. Who are they referring to when they said angel of the Lord? And I said, it's the Lord Jesus Christ himself who takes the human form, just like uh, some of the angels that God gave them power to do that, and then to talk to us and to deal with us. And so he will come the way he will appear to us. You will know it's him. So the Bible talks about him, meaning... Uh, <coughs> indicates like a presence of an angelic deity you know it's not just an ordinary angel but this one is god okay who are seeking and so the phrase they use uh is the christophany okay we talk about that and how other people argue that no it's a it's seem or some of those who said it's not him and then we talk about various titles for uh assigned to different angels and then um we came down and we talk about attributes of angels and we write and i said uh, they have strength intelligence and a uh, confirmed holiness okay and then we talk about their rankings some of the ranks for uh angels which i gave all the scriptures and the working of angels and then we came down here to the end and so uh, we talk about angels and they are working uh, work and service to mankind and then you know I talk about Philip encountered an angel and the fact that angels are supposed to be they are spirit uh, ministry angels sent to serve us uh, those of us who inherit salvation and then uh, Paul himself was encouraged uh, by an angel and then the fact that angels bring us interpretation to maybe vision 
or something that the Holy Spirit has given us. And so God will send angels to come and give us interpretation or some dream or something that he has, the Holy Spirit has given us. If we don't, we lack in that understanding. Angels come and give us interpretation of that. Okay? And the fact that angels execute God's judgment, like we said in uh, uh, Samuel, second Samuel, to uh, eliminate and kill those uh, uh, people. And then uh, the fact that they they take uh, they are involved in the affairs of nations, okay? And we gave all the scriptures. And then the last uh, part, also I said, um, uh, angels bring punishment to nations as well, and God's enemies, and punish God's enemies. And then they are, or they were, involved in the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ and even from his death uh, to his death and resurrection uh, and the tomb and uh, other experience and uh, we came to an end so uh, this is a recap so far of where we are we are done for today so this will be the second part of the series for angels okay and then we will go next week we will uh, we'll try and cover this week coming it's already uh, monday we uh, will start with the uh, general works of angels okay and then we'll go through with it and i'll see how far i go before i bring back the holy spirit in there so thank you so much i really i'm so grateful that you come and listen to me for all this time <laughs> I take too much of your time but I'm very very grateful that every time that you take time out and come and listen to what God has to say to all of us and what to teach us I pray I truly pray that uh, you take hold of the scriptures and go and read and ask the Holy Spirit to give you revelation of everything that we said today everything that you read and tell him that he should impart in you the wisdom that you know you find in these scriptures referring to uh, angels and let him give you more insight tell him to give you more insight give you wisdom to uh, to these scriptures to why angels are important to us or whatever your your questions are ask him as you go through the scriptures okay invite the holy spirit to come and uh, learn you know to teach you to learn to give you uh, understanding of what you are reading so you can't just read as the holy spirit invite him to come and give you uh, knowledge and insight to what you are reading okay and reveal and take the blinds off because sometimes you know how many times we read the bible and then we we'll go back and read it again and then we we'll find something different that's how uh, it is every single one of god's word and then you put fresh you know perspective on what you have already read and then you see that knowledge becomes alive okay and so again thank you so much and may god truly bless you and touch you and reveal himself to you through these studies okay and bring you to where he wants all of us to be and so i will say thank you and god bless you and may god be with you in every area of your life make a way where there seems to be no way give you supernatural favor in everything that you need okay give you wisdom and understanding to get to know who he really is okay and then i'll pray if you are out there and you are listening to me or you are watching or you watch later and you don't know about christ you don't know about god then i will invite you to get to know him so i'm going to pray and i want you to uh, pray with me if you are willing open your heart and pray this prayer with me with me and let him come and be God and everything to you okay so we're gonna pray a sinner's prayer meaning you're gonna turn away from 
everything that you know, everything that you have committed, everything that you have committed, and turn around and give your life into the hands of our Lord Jesus Christ. And He come and wash you and cleanse you and make you a new person and you become His own, okay? And then He gives you life, a fresh start and life beyond your comprehension, okay? And then you become a new creature. So let's pray. Thank you, Father. How awesome are you, Lord? We thank you, Father, that you have strengthened us to stay the course. You have opened our minds to receive from your hand. I ask that you keep this word within us. As you have put a seed, your seed in us, I ask that you watch over this seed, water it, nurture it. Let the seed that you have placed within us become fruitful. Cause us to become doer of your word and not just hear it only. And Father, this morning, I ask that every person that is watching that don't know you, Lord, pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I have sinned against you. I repent of my wicked ways. I turn away from all of my sins. And I ask that you wash me and cleanse me and make me a new. Make me your own, Lord. I receive you this morning. I turn away from all evil, everything that I am now. And I want to follow you. Forgive me my sins and have me upon my life. Lord, I receive you this day. I make you my Lord and Savior. I am clean. I am washed. I am a new creature. I am born again. I belong to you and you only. Oh Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I will never turn back to my old ways. Because now I am born again and of your Spirit. I'm going forward with you and never looking back. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have given, forgiven my sins and you have made me your own. I am a new creature. I thank you and I honor you and I forever will praise you and worship you. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 And if you pray this prayer, you are a new creature. You are the son or daughter of the Most High. And we are very happy and glad and rejoice with you. And so if you will let us know that if you have prayed a prayer, uh, we want to bless you with some information that will help you. And for you to look for a Bible teaching church or whatever you have around to join them to further uh, get more knowledge about your God and how to live life and live it to its fullness, okay, and in the Lord that have saved you and washed you and make you whole. So get in touch with us and let us be a blessing to you. Or if you have any questions, we will be so glad that you keep you get in touch with us. So let us know who you are when you get in touch. Your name, your address, if you want to, or what we can, what you, uh, what we can do to uh, stand with you to make things better for you. Okay, and we'll be happy to do that. So I bless you in the name of Jesus, and I ask that may you live and live to the fullness of life that God has given you. Now that you have accepted Lord, our Lord and Savior as your Lord and Savior. So we thank you for joining us, everyone. We love you. God love you. And uh, we will come again. I can't say for sure, but we'll be coming very soon. And so uh, we we'll look forward to seeing you. But uh, happy new week. Have, have a wonderful day. 
or if you already started your day enjoy the rest of your day and god bless you all okay so for now I'll say goodbye and again thank you for joining us we appreciate you very much and your time god bless you all i love you and bye bye for now thank you goodbye